So CLL stands for chronic lymphocytic leukemia. Chronic meaning that this is a chronic disease uh, with a prolonged clinical course, which is extremely variable from patient to patient. Uh, lymphocytic means that it comes from B lymphocytes, and we'll go over that. And leukemia means uh, it's derived from the Greek word that is white blood. Um, so lymphocytes are part of the normal immune system. So what we're going to go over now is the normal immune system. Uh, they, uh, they reside, or uh, they're found in our lymphoid organs normally, so meaning the tonsils and the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes that are accessible, palpable to us, are in the neck, under the armpits, in the groin. And there are also lymph nodes in the chest. And when they, these lymph nodes become enlarged in, uh, in people who have leukemia or lymphoma, it can be palpable uh, when we examine the patient, but in the chest it can manifest as a cough, or it can manifest also as shortness of breath if there's liquid accumulation in the lung. In the abdomen, if they become enlarged, they can start pressing against organs, and so patients can present with abdominal pain. And so when, pa when people are saying, what, like the doctor is saying, what, um, do you have any symptoms? These are the symptoms that we would be looking for. Also, patients can have splenomegaly, so we examine the spleen, which is in the left upper quadrant, and patients can present with um, uh, being, uh, we call it early satiety, meaning that you, you eat food and then within a half an hour you feel full. So that, that, those are the organs within the lymphatic system. Oh, sorry about that. Um, within those organs, there are cells within the normal immune system. And I'm going to go over this because this is important in terms of how CLL affects the immune system and it, the, the drugs that we use can also affect the immune system. Broadly speaking, the immune system can be divided into innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity is soldiers on the ground. That's how I like to see it. Okay? So in other words, we, ha we are covered with germs, and the reason we're not infected is because we have this innate immunity that's protecting us. We have a skin that's preventing the bacteria that's from entering uh, our body. Uh, and if the skin or uh, you have a lesion in your mouth that uh, becomes open, then you have neutrophils and macrophages that are there that we're going to immediately, within hours, kill bacteria. There is also a smart component to your immune system, meaning that once that happens, there, those, those germs will be cut up into pieces and they will be presented to your smart part of the immune system, which are the lymphocytes. And there, that takes, that's the concept of vaccines. So it, the, these little bits of microbes will be presented to your B cells and their job is to make an antibody that will fight that bacteria. It will design an antibody that fits specifically for that. And the T cells help. There are two types of T cells. There's the helper cells that make that happen. And there's the, the cytotoxic, cytotoxic T cells that could also uh, directly kill those bacteria. Okay? So why am I focused on this? Because, uh, because in leukemia, there could be immune dysfunction. Okay, there could be decreased normal immune cells. You're, there's a mistake that happens. We'll go over why people get CLL. But if you have too many leukemia cells in the marrow, then there's a risk that you will have what we call neutropenia. So you, you're, you're going to have no, decrease of normal immune cells, possibly decreased neutrophils, but also decreased normal lymphocytes, and you won't have an, uh, enough antibodies to fight normal infections. So not uncommonly, I have patients come to me 
presenting with an infection. You can also have abnormal immune functions. B I call this B cells behaving badly because the B cell in CLL is not doing its normal function. Sometimes it creates antibodies towards itself. And so in patients with CLL, you can have patients that have uh, immune side effects or immune uh, destruction of the red cells or the platelets. Okay? This is a, another uh, kind of an abnormal function of the, of the immune system. The other thing is that the chemotherapy, the treatments that we give for CLL, can also affect the immune system. Chemotherapy and some of the novel therapies that I'm going to be talking about can not only affect the B cells, but they affect pathways that are important also in the T cells. We design these drugs to target B cells, but the T cells can also be affected, which puts people at risk of infection. The chemotherapy can also decrease neutrophils, so they can become further neutropenic. So those are the complications, the immune system that normally um, in health is important to, to prevent infection, and, but, but in patients with CLL, they're at risk of infection for multiple different reasons. So what causes CLL? We don't know the, uh, the causes. We know that there's no way to prevent CLL, um, and CLL tell patients CLL is a genetic disease, but it's not inherit, uh, um, inherited from the patient. So it's not a hereditary disease, meaning most patients with CLL don't have a family history of CLL. They did not get it from their parents, and they did not pass it on to their children. This is a genetic mistake that occurs in their normal, uh, their normal function, their normal cells. Why does this happen? So this is the difference between CLL and other types of lymphomas. The, the difference is where this genetic mistake occurred. So normal B cells are born in the marrow. In order for them to survive, they need to acquire a B cell receptor, the antibody that's at the surface of the cell, and this is their main way of communicating with the outside world. If they don't have a functional B cell, then they will die. They will die from neglect, and they will not exit the marrow. But if they have acquired a functional one, then they leave, and they become a naive B cell, and they circulate in the blood, and they wait for the exposure to new germs, new microbes, antigens, we call this. Once they've found something that they... Um, they understand that this is foreign, they have never seen this, they will travel to the lymph node. And the jo their job is to make the perfect antibody for that, for that microbe. That's, this is the designer process. In order for them to do this, they will rapidly divide. And this is the most rapid cell division in the human body normally. Within six hours, you can have millions of different lymphocytes. And what happens is that they take the antibody gene, which is the immunoglobulin gene, and they insert mutations, and they will have millions and millions different mutations, and all of these different cells are there, and they are helped by the T cells. With what I told you, that the T cells are helping, they're exposing the different components of the microbe, and those that have the perfect fit will survive. They will survive because they have that, that feed me signal from the B cell receptor, okay? And so it's an innate, like, uh, addiction, this, this, this signaling to, to survive. And those that don't have it, they don't have the perfect fit, they will die from neglect, okay? We call this apoptosis. And those that survive, they will form a memory B cell. These are the cells that if you are re-exposed to that microbe months later, concept of vaccine, they will come back and they can make antibodies right away, okay? And the, the, the actual machinery to make the antibodies are called plasma cells, okay? So this is normal. Lymphomas hijack the normal cells. 
If a mistake happens at any one of these steps, then they will inherently use those functions and they will use them for their own benefit. Okay? The mistake basically renders that cell immortal and they will create offspring that are exactly like them. Okay? Now, if that mistake occurs early on in the process, then you have an acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It's the most common leukemia in children. It's curable, but it's extremely fast and aggressive. People are usually in hospital. This is very different than CLL. Okay? The naive B cell, if a mistake happens at that step, it, will be, it could lead to unmutated CLL, Ig unmutated, meaning that it has not, it's naive, has not been exposed to the mutation steps in the germinal center, and mantle cell lymphomas can occur in that as well. Diffuse large B cell lymphoma and follicular lymphoma are the most common lymphomas that we see. Why? Because the germinal center is a very genotoxic environment. That's where the mutations occur, that's the hot zone, and the, mis the most mistakes, not surprisingly, occur in that center, okay? And then, when a mistake occurs in the memory B cell, this is considered an Ig immunoglobulin mutated, mutated because it's already seen, exposed to the germinal center, CLL. And then, oh, we don't see, but multiple myeloma occurs in plasma cells. All right, so why is this important? So the behavior of naive, so we'll, we'll discuss the, the differences between unmutated and mutated. The differences are in their behavior. Naive are, cells could be considered like teenagers. They have the personality and the energy of teenagers, whereas the IG mutated can be seen as like grandparents, right? Energy and, you know, they're not all grandmothers are nice and not all teenagers are, are misbehaving, but generally speaking, that's how you have to think of mutated versus un unmutated CLL. The other things that are important in terms of biology, and that's why the, the drugs were designed, um, the way they were designed is this the B cell receptor, so the, the targets for brutinib and, and uh, PI3 kinase and um, idelalisib, is that this inherent dependence on the B cell receptor signaling, the, sig the signaling from the T cells, that is inherent, that, that, that need is inherent to all B cells. And so these drugs are used not only in CLL, but they're being used in other types of lymphomas as well. And another component here is that the, the, some proteins are exquisitely important to, to, for that cell fate, to keep the cell alive. One of those proteins is BCL2, which is a pro-life protein. And it is always turned on in naive B cells and memory B cells, because we do not want those cells to die. We want them to survive. So normally, in normal cells, they express BCL2, and the CLL cells also depend on BCL2. BCL2 is turned off in the germinal center, and so they, do, they should not express BCL2, but the lymphomas will re-up, regulate BCL2 to use that to their own advantage. All right? The B cell receptor is complicated, and we need to go over all of these steps. But suffice to say that when the signal is initiated at the surface of the cell, there's a series of cascades of events that occurs to eventually lead to a survival signal to say, yes, you must live. And there are multiple steps that could be interrupted to stop that signal, and when that signal is stopped, it usually leads to the cell um, to, to, to say, well, I, I can't survive, or I will not proliferate, I will not divide, okay? And the two components here 
that are important for CLL drugs are the BTK inhibitor, which is ibrutinib, it's a very early step. Patients who don't have BTK, there is a disease called um, uh, Bruton's A, a globulinemia, and these children cannot make normal B cells. Okay? Uh, so this is when um, we know that this is very specific for B cells, and so this drug was designed to target BTK to stop B cells from, making, uh, from uh, surviving. Idelalisib targets uh, the PI3 kinase pathway, uh, which can be turned on through multiple different um, scenarios, but common is the B cell receptor signaling. Okay, so pa the B cell receptor pathway turns on survival signals, which can be turned off with the drugs that I'll be talking about. The BCL2 is a completely different mechanism. It resides in the mitochondria. Mitochondria are the motors of, of the cell. They provide, their function is to provide energy to the cell, but also to decide whether the cell lives or dies. If there's genetic change in the cell, through whatever mechanism, then there is a, a response to, to either uh, uh, have the cell commit suicide or to live. And that decision is, is made by the guardian of the genome, which I call P53. And this is important because you will see the response to therapy depends on the presence of this, this very important guardian. And so if there's damage, other chromosomal changes, P53 is turned on, it will stimulate pro-death proteins to go and poke holes into the mitochondria and to destroy it and to have the cell die. This is prevented by the presence of BCL2. BCL2 prevents this from happening, okay? Chemotherapy does the same thing. If you give chemotherapy to someone, their um, patients don't fall apart if we give them chemotherapy because normally our cells can, are not damaged. The P53 will say, no, no, it's okay, you could survive. But in cancer cells, they're already damaged, and then you introduce more damage, and then they're like, oh, this is too much, you should kill yourself, and then the cell dies. CLL cells and other lymphomas can say, I don't want this to happen. I'm going to turn P53 off. I'm going to mutate it or delete it. Okay? And this leads to resistance to chemotherapy. 